seems like you know, organic is one of those things that somewhat of a trend, right? It's like uh, you warp back 10 years ago and people were, uh, 15 years ago and people were all about hydroponics. Yes. It was all about living soil. It was all about yield. And we've seen a drastic change from that to people using more of an all natural organic, uh, turning things into living soil approach. And uh, it's really cool that you're actually formulating your own soil. Now, I got to ask you, is it uh, like a peat based? Is it a cocoa based? Can you kind of break it down like what's in that soil mix? Um, I've got two variants um, because the, the, main, the main soil is peat based. Um, but the issue over here is that at least in Europe, um, they want to forbid um, peat based soil by 2030. So I've got like five, five more years left. Um, to to use it after that it's going to be pretty hard to sell peat based soil um, so but that's the one I've started with but I've also made a second one without peat which is based on cocoa fiber and um, both have their own uh, yeah pros and cons I guess um, the living soil with peat based the peat based living soil is much more durable you can use it for much longer without doing too much with it because it doesn't lose in structure it keeps its structure it doesn't decompose so you have a lot of benefits there the cocoa soil is much more airy which is pretty good especially for auto flowers and stuff um so yeah it's each each soil has its benefits i guess and i i have both that's very exciting how i'm, I'm curious do you find difficulty in sourcing your material or your uh your elements your your What's the word I'm looking for? Materials? Yeah, resources, I guess. Materials, is, it's pretty much the same. Um, yeah, it's getting harder and harder, actually, especially uh, the peat, because um, a lot of big companies, they know where it's going, where it's heading, and the law is already more or less passed. So they try to, to look for different alternatives as well. So for me, it's pretty much the same. I have, also, I have to be on the look every day. Things change a lot. I have to substitute sometimes because some stuff isn't available. So I try to be as local as possible with my resources, um, but some stuff, it's just not possible. So there's always some hustle, some some struggle, I guess, to get some stuff, but um, mostly it works works out pretty good. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest issue a lot of people run into is sourcing. You know, And when you're in a place like Germany or a country that's that's new and starting off, a lot of places, they get monopolized by big corporations. They see legalizations happening there, and they're going to set you know, their flag, and they're going to start there. But it seems like the ones that I've noticed that primarily are trying to push their, their stuff over there are the uh, synthetic nutrients. You know, like at the MJ Berlin, there was a lot of different brands that had synthetic nutrients. I didn't see any organic ones, which was crazy. But I got to yeah. believe it's because it's such a new market. They think, well, these naive new green people, they don't know yet. Let them buy our water. Yeah, well, I guess Germany is lacking behind a bit in terms of um, stuff like living soil and organic growths. Um, overseas, you're like a couple of years ahead and um, trends that, that you've encountered uh, take like two or three years to, to get over to Germany, I guess. So, um, or a couple of years. And living soil is, is big and coming. I'm, I, I see it every day in my, in my daily work life, I guess get more and more people that are interested in this uh, field. And um, I think it's it's going to get a lot bigger as well because Germ German people, they do care a lot about this stuff, like where, where does stuff come from? How is it being produced? What's the, what's the side effects on, on like the, the global, I guess, like uh, health of the planet and stuff. So um, I guess it's, it's, it's the right way at least for most people. But um, as I said, it takes a while to, to grow. And it's a small, rather small movement now, but I guess in, in five or 10 years, if everything stays like it is, it's going to be much bigger. Totally what are you agree. using for fertilizer? And then do you also like, there's, I feel like there's different levels to organic growing or, or living soil, right? There's folks that just use fertilizer and they top dress and they mix it in. Then there's other folks who, but they have worms in there pots they have cover crops they're using companion plants how deep are you kind of into this yeah i've pretty much everything um so i'm using worms i'm using cover crops um everything you you could imagine basically if 
effective microorganisms, like I really want to have the focus on the microbes in the soil. So um, sure, I can use organic um, fertilizer and do top dressings, which at times I'm doing, depends on, on the bed and the soil and the grow. Um, but the main focus really is on the microbes and everything that comes with it. And that's the soil food web as well. Uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham is a very important person for me where I learned a lot from. Um, and um, she's having the focus as well on the soil food web. So small bacteria, fungi, um, microarthropods, macroarthropods, and worms, and all that makes the soil great, I guess. Everything you need, you need everything to make it a good um, closed loop, I guess. How, so I'm curious, being in Germany right now, how difficult is it for you? Actually, rather, what does your growing situation look like in Germany right now? Yeah, so maybe in terms of law, yeah, uh, yeah. you need to be you need to be 18 or above, of course, to to grow, and you're only allowed to have like three plants at your house at maximum per person. Even if you have a partner or your wife. Um, you can have up to six plants, of course, but they need to be in different tents. You have to separate them. Uh, it's pretty weird at, at times, but it's, as I said, very strict here. So you have uh, the possibility to grow three plants and that's not limited to like flowering plants. It's overall. So you need to be a bit creative. Um, as like Rob already said, perpetual harvest harvesting is a, is a thing that, that helps a bit here because you can have like one mother plant and then try to cycle the other two to make it a bit more approachable, I guess. So you have like more harvests because harvesting is another issue here in Germany. You can have three plants, but the issue is that you can only harvest like 50 grams dry. And once, <laughs> yeah, and once, um, you've cut down the plant, at this moment, you, you could be liable for your, for your harvest. So you need to pretty much eyeball what's like 50 grams dry. And then you try to be under that because otherwise you're doing illegal stuff. So people are starting to weigh their harvest in, in, uh, like pretty much after they cut them off. And then 20% of that is like the dry weight. And then they try to calculate everything. It's, it's not optimal, I guess. So no, it's absurd. It's absurd. Well, dude, we have it in I Michigan. Just, Twelve plants, seventy grams. Seventy grams. Okay. Wow. So somehow we're somehow we're supposed to only have twelve grams or seventy grams of finished product with our twelve plants that we can grow. The math is by people who don't they don't understand. And what's crazy is our plant count is is high like that, but it's the same thing. Is what. Who made these laws that limit the amount that you can have dry? Do they not understand how much? No, these are the same. Harvesting? These are the same people that take pictures of themselves in front of tables of two bags of weed, and it's like we confiscated one point nine million dollars worth of street product. <laughs> <laughs> this FTS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. Use discount code the Stash Fifteen at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.